Hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. This week, we'll continue with the best arguments I've ever heard for atheism. This week, Argument 5, the argument from the burden of proof. Premise 1. When honestly evaluating whether a claim is valid or not, the burden of proof rests on the person making the claim. Premise 2. It's invalid to claim that something is proven simply because no one can prove otherwise. Premise 3. However, the whole idea of God rests upon him being infinite. We would therefore need an infinite amount of data in order to prove that he exists. We can't possibly do this. Conclusion. Therefore, no proof of God can ever be sufficient, and therefore it's never honest to claim that God exists. This argument claims that the burden of proving God's existence rests entirely on the theist, since the theist is the one advancing the claim. If pressed, they'll say that this is because the theist is advancing a positive claim, namely that God exists, while the atheist is advancing a negative claim, that God doesn't exist. This rests on the belief that claiming there aren't any fill-in-the-blank in the universe is only possible if we're aware of the entire universe. Besides, proving universal negative claims isn't possible anyway, and shouldn't be expected of the atheist. However, there are many problems with this approach. To start with, it rests on several false assumptions. First, that God is somewhere in the universe. This is wrong. Since he's not in the universe, therefore, claiming that God doesn't exist isn't a universal negative claim. It's a particular negative claim. However, even if it were a universal negative claim, it would still be possible to prove it. For example, I can prove that no members of the U.S. House of Representatives with green scales exist anywhere in the universe. I can do this because I have enough evidence about each of those representatives to deduce that all of them are on Earth, and that all of the ones on Earth lack green scales. Particular negative claims are even easier to prove, like there are no lions in the Statue of Liberty, or I have no money in my hand. The only kind of statement that's unprovable is the kind without relevant evidence behind it. Therefore, the atheist does still need to prove his claim. Secondly, it's actually possible to rephrase the claims of atheism as a positive claim. Watch, I'll do it right now. God's non-existence is a true proposition. Thus, the negative statement becomes a positive one, and it still needs to be proven in order to be believed. But getting back to the deductive argument, the main problem with it is that premise 3 isn't right at all. We don't need an infinite amount of information about God to prove that he exists, in the same way that we don't need to know the exact contours of the ocean to know that the ocean exists. We just need enough evidence to prove that one proposition, does God exist? Finally, this argument would really only have weight if the evidence were on the side of atheism. But as we've been discussing, no atheistic explanation of the universe has ever been able to fully explain how the universe could come into being without a cause. God exists because he's logically and scientifically necessary in order for reality to exist. And this argument has some major faults in both its approach and its premises, which prevent it from really challenging that proof. As effective as this argument can be in ordinary conversation, it's still just a debating trick with no real substance behind it. When push comes to shove, if you have strong proof that God exists, it's still dishonest to ignore it. And if you have no evidence that God doesn't exist, it's better to withhold judgment than to make that claim. That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.